Number three, don't trust your intuition. Whether you're a business leader, ad worker, or foreign officer, chances are you got to where you stand today because of some really hard work and healthy dose of intuition. In fact, research suggests that many top business leaders got their roles by making intuitive decisions. But here's the thing. Intuition isn't some mysterious superpower you can pull out at will. Instead, it is a conglomerate of observational skills that are highly informed by the culture you grew up in and the accumulation of your past experiences. We've seen highly successful and intelligent individuals clash and burn when relying on their gut in cross-cultural interactions. How do you remedy this situation? Research, research, and research. Read books, ask questions, observe interactions between members of the host culture. Pay attention to the positive and negative responses to your own interactions with the culture. By doing this, you build up that weight of experience to inform your observations. But even cross-cultural workers with the case of experience in a given region find this one thing most valuable. Trusted local friends who let you run your experiences by them. These individuals know their own culture and hopefully understand a bit of your culture. They can help you see a given situation through their eyes a few minutes of consultation with a friend can save you from very embarrassing or even expensive mistakes. Number 4. Slow down. Native English speakers and some non-native speakers are notorious for speaking too quickly in cross-cultural discussions, even when they've been reminded repeatedly to slow down. Whatever speed you think feels right, start from there and slow it down at not. One time it's especially important to step back and check your speed is when you feel like you're really killing it. Maybe you're describing a product or cause outline that you know inside out, or you are passionately presenting steps to address food insecurity. It's these times that you are most likely to speak more quickly and slip into industry jargon or use figures of speech that mean little to your listeners. Number five, take a reality check and then do it again. Never assume your listener is tracking with you. It's important to do regular check-ins and make sure they understand you. Here's the key though. Don't simply ask yes or no questions. Questions like, do you understand? Did that make sense? And are you in agreement with this? actually tell you nothing because what your listener understood and what you think they understood could be two very different things. Additionally, in some cultures, the individual will say yes just to save face. A better plan is to focus on questions like this. I want to make sure that made sense. Could you tell me what you heard me say? If you were to use this business solution, 
lesson plan, etc. At your place of employment, what might it look like? What is your understanding of this issue? What do you think about this? What parts of this would you like me to clarify? What would it look like for us to work together on this? What questions do you have about this? Question like this will vary in their effectiveness, so it's important to pay close attention to how your counterparts phrase language and seek clarification. When possible, use the same questions and wording that you've heard them use with you and others. The reality is that you will make mistakes. The good news, though, is that. People often recognize the signs of a person who is genuinely seeking to understand and honor the culture. By becoming a student of the cultures you work with, you demonstrate a respect that, at the times, will open more doors than a perfect marketing presentation or thorough product description ever could.